G'day folks, it's Rob here. This week's vlog, we're going to be looking at the different gingers we grow in the aquaponics, as well as the soil around the place, and also to the turmeric. They're members of the ginger family. So we'll start off with some um, plants growing in the root pouches just in front of the aquaponics. So just in front of the aquaponics, we have a uh, number of ginger plants growing. We'll have a look at the plants in that root pouch in a tick. Over here, we have two different varieties. We have a Cambodian Pon Lai ginger. That's this little one in the foreground. Um, that was gifted to us uh, a couple of years ago now, and it's just gone absolutely burko in these little root pouch gardens. You can actually see the pouches very well for the greenery on top. And I've just got a little bit of the uh, Malabar climbing spinach growing next to it. And over the back here, we have an Australian native ginger. Um, I'll try and get a better camera angle just to give you a closer look at that one. But first, this Pon Lai, we haven't used a lot of this one here. I have used it mainly just in drinks, and I've found it actually tasting a little bit sweeter than the normal ginger. It looks pretty much all the same rhizome-wise, just a little bit smaller. So something we're probably going to um, experiment with a lot more this year, things as the plants have done really well. They're sort of um, pushing out other plants over the back there. So we should get a bumper harvest with those guys. We'll just nip around and have a look at the Aussie ginger. So this is the Australian native ginger over the back here. It tends to have a lot broader leaves and they're a little bit thicker, I think, than the, the normal gingers we tend to grow. This one here, like most gingers, you can eat the small shoots and some of the leaves. You can use them to wrap up food to cook with. But these guys here also have an edible purple berry, something I've sort of crossed my fingers and hope we're going to see this year. So far, though, I haven't seen any sign of any flower spikes. Um, as you can see, it is um, just as tasty to grasshoppers as the other gingers, so we do have a little bit of damage there. But hopefully we're going to end up with a, at least one flower spike this season. Uh, this little section was a, a little root that Kira brought back from a school camp. Uh, they worked in a native nursery for a while and this was one of the gifts they were given. This one here we haven't tasted yet because we're trying to grow it up from that small section. But if it does taste alright, um, we will probably divide the plant into two. And then we'll grow one for propagation purposes and one for a harvest next season. So it's a bit of an unknown quantity at the moment. Now just next to these root pouch trays with a few bits and pieces in it, we have some um, volunteer red Chinese amaranth that's actually growing in the ground in front of our main crop of ginger for the year. So we might actually um, nip around the back so you can get a better look at these guys. So this is our main crop of ginger this year. It's just grown in a large root pouch garden bed. There are eight plants, all started from ginger we grew ourselves last season. And as you can see down here, they actually put on a nice little bit of growth. That's one plant there to the right, and there's another plant over there to the left. So I'm actually um, crossing my fingers for a rather sizable harvest from these guys this year. As you can see, we're still getting little shoots too. So even though we're in autumn, uh, they, there's enough heat going around for these guys to continue putting on more rhizome. I'd say probably about uh, three to maybe four months time, these guys will be coming out. Um, I'll actually be running a bit of a competition. Thank you very much, Nicole, for suggesting it. It's uh, basically guess how much ginger comes out of this garden bed competition, but I'll announce details to that um, closer to the day. Uh, but as you can see, yeah, very impressive growth. For you folks who haven't subscribed already, don't forget to do so and check the little bell icon. That way you'll receive a notification when I announce the competition for how much ginger we get out of this little bed here. So just to give you a bit of a look at the, um, the ginger as it stands, that little bit there is pink. I mean, pretty much all could harvest that now and treat it as um, young ginger, but I think, or baby ginger, but I think I might just leave it in there. And yeah, we'll wait and see how much we get as a total harvest from this bed. Uh, if you are interested in um, finding out how you can grow ginger like this, I'll pop a little link up there and that'll be to um, the growing guide. It actually showed how these guys went in, how the soil was prepared. So um, hopefully it'll give you a few tips and tricks in growing a decent amount of ginger just like this here. In the aquaponics this year, we're growing a Gallingal, or the Thai ginger for the first time. It got off to a bit of a shaky start. You can probably make out the grasshopper damage uh, for you guys who don't follow us regularly. Uh, we have a load of grasshoppers and locusts come through the patch here during summer, and they pretty much will decimate a lot of the plants and they tend to like ginger a bit. So I'm not thinking we're going to get a massive Gallingal harvest from this, but that's all right because we have a load down the back that I'll show you in a minute. We also have some other gingers. These guys got off to a little bit of a slow start, but they're slowly putting on some growth. Uh, this little clump here is all from one plant. 
So hopefully uh, we might get as much as the last mammoth aquaponic ginger harvest I uploaded a clip on. Uh, if not, I'll still be happy with any sort of yield. And this plant behind it is a turmeric. It uh, has grown from a little piece of root I didn't pull out last year. So it's put on some nice bit of growth. So just on the other side of this turmeric, we have another turmeric. This one was actually deliberately planted out this year. It's an orange variety. So it hasn't put on quite as much growth as the others. But yeah, there's a sizable little bit of root down there. Oh, and yes, another grasshopper. Uh, not a huge harvest, but with all the other turmeric we have growing around the place, um, we'll get more than enough for our needs. And there's just another little ginger that I popped out at the same time. While we're talking aquaponics, I'll give you a look at this one. This is a volunteer plant. You can actually see the mother from last season over the back there. And all this is pretty much, well, I'd say at least over half of it is new growth from this season. It's put on two or three or maybe four new mothers. So that central section there will be a new mother with little hands and fingers coming off of that that um, some people call daughters. So we're going to get probably about two to three kilos out of this plant, I would think, if maybe not a little bit more. So I'll probably do a little bit of a turmeric harvest clip. Uh, this one here definitely needs to come out because this bed is supposed to be a floating raft bed. Not only that, it's um, shading out all the beds behind it, even at this point of um, our autumn. So it really does need to come down. For you folks who might get plants like this that get away from you, put on a little bit too much growth, you can also uh, treat them as a chop and drop crop. That's basically where you chop down some of the green stem, either lay it on the ground whole as a mulch or chop it up finer. We do the same with the Queensland arrowroot, but I've seen people do it with um, the turmeric as well. Uh, we might actually uh, pop on over and I'll show you some turmeric that's flowering. Just down behind our bay and lime tree here, we have some auto top up wicking barrels. And in the center one, we have some madras turmeric. Now this has been the only turmeric that has flowered for us until this year, but more on that in a tick. Uh, these guys here throw a beautiful little white flower with pink tinges on the ends and the petals end up turning green as well. So very ornamental plant, I think. Might pop on down and show you some galangal. So just next to the aquaponics is some galangal sharing a pot with some um, rather old Egyptian spinach that is sending its seeds out all over the yard and also a little flat leaf Italian parsley. We've been picking for quinoa and tabbouleh like salads. Uh, this galangal here was just grown from a small little section that had greenery on it after I harvested some for a curry and just popped it in the pot about 18 months ago and it's taken off rather well. So this one actually needs to be moved when we renovate the garden. Uh, a little bit further down the back here, we have some black turmeric that was gifted to us by Huey. Thank you very much, mate. Um, this one here, as you can see, has the variegation up the leaf. So you know it's the um, proper black turmeric. It's actually growing in a root pouch and sharing it with one of our sunshine chilies. There's a couple of chilies down there. One or two will be coming off for tonight's dinner. Um, but yeah, this turmeric is something we haven't actually tried yet. It is black in color and is used mainly for its medicinal qualities. It's a very bitter one. So it's used in teas and also to make up um, medicinal powders and whatnot. Uh, but it's a nice one to have in the collection here. And I really do thank you, Hui. It's been interesting watching this grow and I really can't wait to see the flowers pop. I won't be separating any of this um, next season. I'll be leaving it go in the pouch and let it over winter and hopefully we'll see a couple of flowers off in next season. Behind the bees, we have some finger root. This one here is growing really well. It's used in a lot of um, Thai and um, other Asian cuisines as well as Chinese. Most seasons we also see a couple of flowers form on these finger root plants, generally down near the base. They're a very delicate white and pinky purplish flower that only lasts a couple of hours in the heat of our summer. And we also have some more growing in this little um, wicking garden over here. It's actually growing over the back there. Uh, in this garden we have some normal uh, fish and owl ginger and we have some of the pond lye that actually threw out little flower buds this year. And just over the back here, I did notice three more flower buds from this pond lye ginger. These guys have got a little bit of a reddish tinge to them. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to catch any of the flowers while they've been in bloom, but I did manage to take a little bit of footage and a couple of photos from the flowers on last year's small flower bud. Right over the back of this bed, we have a couple of plantings of the Ken Chur ginger. There's one there and there's another one uh, just down in there. These gingers also throw a very pretty little white and purple flower right down near the base of the plant. And like the others, they're a bit hard to capture because they're fairly delicate and only last a couple of hours every day. So these guys here are something we haven't really used at all, mainly because I haven't managed to grow a big enough crop. 
Unfortunately, they ended up too sheltered here, so I think they could have done with a little bit more sunlight this year. Uh, next to it, we have some turmeric that came up all as volunteers. This bed was actually shown in the last turmeric harvest um, clip I posted to the channel, and all this has just grown from small sections left over. Just under our dwarf papaya volunteer, well, it's not looking so dwarf anymore, we have some turmeric that was planted out last season. We'll nip around the other side because I want to show you something with these ones. So just on the other side of the bed here, and this is the turmeric that was planted out a while ago now. There was only six or maybe seven plants popped in there, but they've done exceeding, exceedingly well. So well that this variety has given us our first flower this season. I've never seen this variety flower here. In fact, I was told it never would in our climate, but we must be doing something right. Similar flower to the yellow madras, but just slightly different um, the way the uh, petals form on the top. So it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, with the rest of the plants to see if we get any more flowers. So the second last ginger I have to show you is the Galangal. It's sharing a bed with some sweet leaf orchid took in there. Thank you very much, Ben. We had some survive. Um, this Galangal has done extremely well. It was started off, well, the whole plot here was started off from two small plants that I grew from seed. We're actually very lucky that this variety does uh, form little um, seed pods here and after it flowers, of course, and we have harvested a number of seeds from it. None this season, but last season we got a load so I have them up in the house. I'm ready to try again. Obviously, I didn't need to um, sow any out this season. So Lizzie and I thought we'd come down and show you the Galangal in the bed itself, just to show you how tight it's growing in there or how tightly packed it is. It's a um, very vigorous plant when given the right conditions. Absolutely thrives uh, here in southeast Queensland. You can probably see a few new shoots and a rather long new shoot there. Um, so it really does love our weather. We find that it doesn't die back over winter. In fact, a lot of this taddy growth is actually last season's growth that is still yet to die off. I should probably um, thin it out a bit, but yeah, it, it just does phenomenally well here. And we've also got a pumpkin that's decided to um, send down some roots in this bed too. So um, no wonder this um, wicking bed is running out of water very quickly. But yeah, it's just one of those spices that I don't think I could ever do without now, uh, since we do a lot of our own Thai and Indo style um, cooking. So just here is the latest addition to our ginger family. This is lesser cardamom. You can also get uh, a cardamom called true cardamom that a lot of people prefer. As far as I know though, and after quizzing the lady at the stall, this one will provide us with those awesome tasting little cardamom pods that everyone knows and loves. Uh, it's used a lot in savory meals as well as sea sweet meals through Asia and the Middle East. So definitely looking forward to getting some of these um, pods off. The only catch is it takes around about four years before it develops a gorgeous little flower and then the pods um, form after that. So it's going to be a bit of a wait for us. For you folks who want to learn how to grow some awesome looking ginger like this or the turmeric down the back, I'll leave a little uh, link at the end of the clip and also there'll be a link down in the description below to a growing guide playlist that has a couple on ginger as well as turmeric. Obviously, I must be doing something right if I can grow it as good as this lot here in the root pouch. I'll also include a link down in the description to a playlist that looks at some of the awesome harvests we've had, including the one from the aquaponics behind me here, and also how we process the ginger and turmeric so you can use it long after the season's over. Before I go, I really do need to thank the awesome folks who are continuing to support us over on Patreon. Thank you very much all. Um, they have access to a Facebook only group and I post a few little videos here and there, especially for them. Uh, in fact, we've actually got some super contributors who go way above and beyond. And if you'd like to check out their links to their websites and their blogs and their Facebook pages, they're all down in the um, description below. It'd be great if you could suss them out and show them some love. I do hope you've enjoyed this clip though and learn a thing or two about ginger. And I will catch you next clip. Cheers all. Have a top one.